Medical science has come a long way. In the early 20th century, a common cause of death in hospitals was something called compartment syndrome, which was a condition where swelling from an injury cuts off circulation, leading to necrosis. If untreated, your flesh basically strangles itself from the inside. Back then, the only solution was amputation. It was a painful, brutal and terrifying fate. But it wasn't instant. On the other hand, do you know what was instant? Getting hit in the Sherman. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell does compartment syndrome have to do with a World War II tank? Well, think of it this way. If a Sherman took a hit, there wasn't any time for swelling, no need for amputation, and definitely no risk of long-term complications, because you were already dead. What? Today, we're talking about the M4 Sherman. It's one of the most produced and most used tanks of World War II. If you've read anything about it, you've probably seen two main opinions. One side says it was a well-designed, reliable and effective tank. The other side says it was an under-armored, undergunned, rolling death trap. So, which side is right? Surprise, surprise, both are right. One side is just optimistic and the other side is too pessimistic. Anyways, today we're focusing on one question. Why not the M4 Sherman? Basically, we're talking about its problems and downsides and all the other reasons why you wouldn't want to operate an M4 Sherman. So hello and welcome and enjoy this video. Design flaws. Let's start with the design flaws. Those are problems that arose from compromises that had to be made during the creation of the tank. Height. The Sherman was over 2.7 meters tall. Reason for that was mainly the engine. Early Shermans used the Wright R975 radial engine, which was an aircraft engine repurposed for tanks. It was very bulky and therefore needed a tall engine compartment, just like you need larger clothes when you get bulky. Also, the transmission room was in the front while the engine was in the back, so therefore the drive shaft had to go right under the fighting compartment, which naturally forced the fighting compartment to be raised in its position to create enough space for the drive shaft. This design made the whole tank taller. Why that's a bad thing is quite obvious. A bigger tank is a bigger target, and a bigger target is almost never a good thing. Armor. The first Germans had just 50mm of sloped frontal armor, but by 1943, new German tank guns had no issues penetrating that. The side armor of Germans was also just 38mm. That means if a Sherman was fighting against anything bigger than a Panzer IV, the Sherman was in trouble. Ammunition storage. Now that's funny. Early Sherman models stored their ammunition in the sponsons, basically right above the tracks. This meant that when a Sherman got hit, there was a high chance of an ammo cook-off causing catastrophic fires. That's also why it got nicknames like Tommy Cooker and Ronson. This issue prompted later models to introduce wet storage. This new layout moved the shells to a lower position in the hull and surrounded them with water jackets. Because if the ammo is surrounded by wet stuff, it's less likely to catch fire. Early Sherman crews didn't have that luxury. But I guess that doesn't matter anymore, it's not like we can apologize to them. Undergunned. The Sherman's standard gun was the 75mm M3. At first, this wasn't a problem because most tanks in 1942 weren't that heavily armored. But by 1943 and 1944, the Sherman was running into the new and up-armored Panthers and Tigers, which the Sherman couldn't penetrate. And that's where things got ugly. The German Panther 75mm KWK-42 gun could hit, penetrate and kill a Sherman from over 1500 meters away. The Tiger's 88mm could do the same at even greater distances. Meanwhile, the Sherman 75mm gun could only penetrate the Panther's front at about 500 meters if it was even lucky enough to get that close. So in a straight up fight, the Sherman was at a massive disadvantage. The Americans did eventually upgrade from the 75mm M3 to the 76mm M1 gun, which had better penetration. But by the time these Germans arrived, German tanks had also been upgraded, so therefore the firepower gap never really closed. But to be fair, the Sherman was never really supposed to fight against tanks. For that, the US Army had dedicated tank destroyers like the M18 for example. The Sherman itself was supposed to fight against infantry, not tanks. 
The Sherman's mobility was a huge setting point. It was reliable, easy to fix and could move quite well on roads. Compared to a German Panther, whose transmission was better at breaking down than transmissioning, the Sherman was a dream to maintain. But there was a downside. The tracks. The Sherman's original 16-inch tracks were fine on solid ground but struggled in mud, snow and soft terrain. So basically everywhere where they would spend most of their time. Panthers with their wider tracks had much better off-road performance. To fix this, later Shermans got dock build and connectors which spread the weight out a bit. But it wasn't until the HVSS suspension upgrade that the Sherman finally got truly wide tracks. But by that time, the war was almost over. Why it still worked? So after all this, why was the Sherman still the most used tank of the war? Because war isn't won by the best tank, it's won by the most available tank. The Sherman was easy to make, easy to transport and easy to repair. For every panther or tiger on the battlefield there were 5 or 6 Shermans. And to be fair, those Sherman tanks weren't as invincible as people think. Panthers broke down constantly, tigers were slow, heavy and drank a lot of fuel. A Sherman might not win in a straight fight, but a swarm of Shermans could overwhelm them quite effectively. There is a quote, and I think it originally comes from the Soviet T-34s, which goes, If one T-34 doesn't destroy a Tiger, the next five certainly will. Arguably, you could apply this to Shermans as well. So, was the Sherman a bad tank? It depends on what you're comparing it to. If you compare it to a late war German tank, yeah, it was bad. It was outgunned and outarmored. But quite frankly, it was also the right tank for the war the Allies were fighting. And it was reliable, adaptable and most importantly, it was there in numbers the Germans couldn't match. In the end, war is about more than just having the best tank, it's about having enough tanks that work when you need them. And in that sense, the Sherman did exactly what it needed to do. Anyways, that was all I had to say for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you think I said anything that is not right or you think I should have added any additional information to this video, please let me know in the comments and share your knowledge. Besides that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.